Today I'm going to talk about uh, the idea that places have brands, which is the image that they give off, and how sometimes when these images that they give off um, aren't attracting enough investment and um, kind of opportunities, how cities go about trying to rebrand them, change the image of the city. So when we look into uh, how places change over time, we need to look at um, the brand of a place. The brand of a place is just like any brand. It is like a McDonald's or a Starbucks. It is the popular image that um, whatever it is, that company, or in this case, the place has. It's that image that has been acquired over time and what it is generally recognised as. Um, so this can have objective parts to it. So when I think of a place like Glasgow in this picture on the left, it is an, there's object, objective aspects to it and the fact it is a physical location. So that is an actual place. So that is part of his image, the fact that it's on the banks of the Clyde, it's in a physical location next to a river, it's on the east of Scotland. That is a part of what makes up its image. But also, more importantly, there is subjective elements to it. And these really do build into the image. So it could be the atmosphere a place has. Is it a place that people would like to go to to visit as tourists? Um, is it a place that is, you know, safe? In terms of safety, is it an area of high crime or is there a big drug problem in that city? Um, or is it an area where you would take your family? But also the other thing subjectively, is it a place that seems economically active? And these all play into this wider popular image of a place. I've used Glasgow as a good example because um, if you, as you see from this picture, this was a, an image of Glasgow from the 70s that was well recognised. It was the popular image. It was a very negative image, and that was largely due to deindustrialisation. Um, de and so this played into this image that it was not a very nice place to go to. You know, it was derelict. There was a lot of unemployment. It wasn't very safe because um, crime rates had gone up because people were out of work. So the image of Glasgow in the 1970s was a place of economic decline and poverty. And this image, this actual physical picture here shows that. So Glasgow, as many cities like Sheffield, and Manchester, um, parts of London, they all went through this um, period in the late um, 70s, early 80s and early 90s where they started to rebrand. Therefore, they were trying to change that image that these were derelict and defunct places and give them a new image. And there were certain strategies that they did to achieve that. So for a place to successfully rebrand itself and give itself this dazzling new brand, there are three key elements it needs to do. The first one is brand artifact. That is basically making changes to the physical environment. This can be done in a series of ways. It can literally be due by um, creating a new environment. As we can see in this picture here, they've built new buildings that are glossy and shiny and, and look great. Um, it could also be reusing the existing environment, so maybe making old buildings look better. Um, or it could be just simply removing kind of some of the, the physical environment that is imposing. So you can reuse, you can remove old uh, some of the old environment, but you can also, um, you know, create a new physical environment. So, you know, you might have heard other terms like regeneration. That is very much changing the physical uh, environment. And that's very much what the brand artifact is about. The next uh, element of rebranding is brand essence. This is how people experience the city. So this is about not just kind of how you, people that visit, but is like living in the city and working in the city. And also does include when people visit it, what kind of experience do they get? Um, even when they're talking about a city, what, how are they talking about the city? That's another key part of the brand of a place. The last element of rebranding is what we call the brandscape. And this is simply how it compares to other places. So as we get into a more and more competitive um, world, it, these places, especially in a globalised world, are really, really competing, not just with, you know, against the town next to them now, but they're competing with towns 
you know, across the country, um, across um, the uh, continent, across the world, um, for often for investment. So how does that place compare with those competitor cities? I've put in here that Glasgow called itself Scotland with style. This was part of a rebranding strategy in the 2000s. And that was to make it seem as a place that was arty and and, um, and and different so that people that were interested in that kind of thing would come to Glasgow rather than go to another city like Sheffield because it had something for them. So very much um, building part of your brand is this brandscape, which is making sure that you can compete in a, you know, increasingly globalized market, um, especially when it comes um, in terms of things like money. One way that Glasgow tried to rebrand itself was by hosting in 2014 the Commonwealth Games. And as part of this, this obviously led to uh, lots of construction work and lots of investment in the town as they were hosting all of these big areas. So you had the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome was built in part of town, other sporting venues. This is one of the strategies these places use. They have what these called legacy events where they have big sporting or cultural events and then try to tag in regeneration and investment associated with that. The hope is that many of these projects will lead to further regeneration over time. But obviously there is um, a limited amount of success with some of these um, as you can see in all of these pictures, there's lots of branding. People make Glasgow. That is part of that um, changing the image of Glasgow um, that the city tried in this time. The last thing to mention is that like places, the brands and the images of places are not static. They evolve over time. And Glasgow is a really good example of that. Uh, we looked at this one. Uh, I'm going to get you to look at Glasgow Miles Better, which is one of the early, early rebranding campaigns for Glasgow. This was in the kind of uh, 70s and 80s. And this was very much uh, uh, trying to get people um, that were tourists to come to the city. It was trying to get tourism industry off the ground. By the the noughties, this had evolved, you know, still trying to get tourists to come. But now it was this Glasgow, Scotland with style. This was to attract kind of, um, you know, art, artists and and the kind of people that wanted to go and do um, fashion at university. So it was very much built around the universities. But the fact that Glasgow had lots of famous designers and that was in kind of the, the noughties. But now this has moved on to this, the latest one, which replaced it um, a couple of years ago. And it's called Glasgow Makes um, People Make Glasgow. And this is very much the, the, the idea that the kind of identity of Glasgow, Glasgow is very much about the Glaswegians, the people in the city. They make um, Glasgow unique. Um, they make it different to all those other places around the world and it's the identity the entrepreneurial spirit the creativeness of the of the people that make it so that is the way that just one city's brand has evolved it can sometimes be because the fact is they want to make um, uh, changes to the city or that the brand doesn't work and they need to uh, invest more money to get people um, to come this is a really good example but there are many many examples of other cities doing very very similar things